you, Chantel. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I just would like to thank you for Chantel's life, Lord, and she's such a blessing in our lives, in our community. Um, I'm sure she has wonderful things to, to say today, and I pray, Lord, that you use her as your instrument. Father, we, I pray that you will open our hearts to listen for every single word she has to say today. I pray to you to stay with her, that your Holy Spirit is around her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How are we? Seven. Can you hear me? Am I yes. on? Woo. All right. So today we're going to talk about finding happiness. Let's get to my topic slide. Perfect. All right. We don't have to be scholars to know the benefits of happiness. All right. When we're happy, we feel good. We feel proud. And we, we notice that our motivational abilities just shoot through the roof. So when we're happy, it counteracts negative emotions. It broadens our problem-solving abilities and it helps improve our health. You know, less stress means less impacts on our heart. So, what are some crazy ideas or crazy things that some people do to start their day being happy? Some people, they do tapping, so they tap on certain acupressure points all over their body to release stress. Or there's some people that believe posture, so they have rigid posture, basically like a piece of cardboard, that helps their blood flow to their brain, which apparently helps them make feel, makes them feel happy. Or you even have the, the ones who take freezing showers in the mornings just to suck that last bit of dopamine out of their brains. So <clears throat> these people here, George Burns, he believes happiness is having a large, caring, close-knit family in another city. There could even be success is getting what you want, but happiness is wanting what you get. Or there's even one of the keys to happiness is bad memory. Yeah. Material things like a nice home, a successful job, and a wealthy income, you know, can contribute to someone's happiness. However, happiness is kind of something a little bit more subtle, and it appears to have more to do with relationships, identity, and self-fulfillment. Today, today I'm going to touch on three topics based on happiness. So meaning of happiness, happiness and material possessions, and then the love of God and the law. So the meaning of meaning and happiness. So there are three key questions to ask yourself to understand meaning and to become happy. So value, do I matter? Do I matter to the people around me? Do I matter to my family? And more importantly, do you matter to yourself? Purpose. What is your purpose? What is your purpose in your life? What is the purpose of the people that you're surrounded with? And then lastly, agency. Can you make a difference? Can you make a difference in your life? Can you make a difference in other people's lives? And can you make a difference in the people in your communities? People, they may answer these questions very differently. Some may say <coughs> that that the three things that mainly you only need in your life is someone to love, something to do with your life, and then something to hope for. The Pope, he has some top ten tips for happiness. So the first one, let everyone be yourself. There's no point running around living life someone else's life. Be proud of who you are. Live your life. Number two, give yourself tirelessly to others. When you offer something of yours to someone else, does it make you feel down in the dumps? Oh man, I had to give away my toothbrush to that person. Not that you'd give a toothbrush away, I couldn't think of something. When you give to others, it gives you pleasure. Number three, walk softly. When you reflect back on your life and you think, man, I, I stood on that relationship, I, I trashed that job. When we walk in with God and we walk calmly through life, we will reap the positive benefits. Number four, be available for your kids and your families. Jobs are always going to be there, but family, they can leave. So we've got to cherish the family the times that we do have them. Number five, spend the day of rest with family. You know, coming to church, it may be very busy for you. You know, you might be helping out in the sound. You could be up the front talking, or you could be song leading, or helping out with the kids in the back. But spend the full day with family. 
number six, work toward empowering people. Young people, they are the way of the future. So if we empower them, if we give them a sense of self-worth and dignity, then they will certainly help us. Number ten, seven, seven, whew. Number seven, care for the environment. One of God's greatest creations was the environment, as well as us, of course. But if we're here, we can care for the environment, we see God's creation, we will feel happy. Number eight, move on. When bad things happen in our lives, it is hard to move on, it is hard to forgive. But if we move on, we will know the the future's ahead of us and we can live a happy life. Number nine, respect others' opinions. Now I know I'm basically always right, but as long as if we're always respecting other people's values, beliefs and their lifestyles, they have their own ability to have their own values and opinions. Number 10, actively strive for peace. War brings sadness, but peace brings happiness. These tips can be put into a formula. Have a look how we can do that. What's something everyone wants every day that can't be bought but can be found? And when you find it, you can lose it. But if you share it, you get more of it. The answer? Happiness. And everyone has a formula for finding it. A lot of people say, me plus job plus a house plus a family equals happy. It's the classic American dream. But for a teenager, the formula's more simple. Me plus a car equals happy. Then there's the nature lover formula. Me plus a backpack minus civilization equals happy. The sports fan says, me plus my team plus the number one draft pick equals happy. And for the millionaire, it's me plus money plus even more money equals happy. The problem with these formulas is that other stuff messes with the equation. The millionaire meets a billionaire. Oh yeah. The sports fan starts losing. The nature lover runs into a mother bear and her cubs. The teenager's formula gets way more complicated. And lately, the American dream hasn't been so dreamy. People have lost jobs and lost homes. Families are crumbling under the strain and more people than ever are wondering, is there some other formula out there that can make me happy again? There is, but you won't find it out there. You'll find it in here. And it looks like this. J plus O plus Y. First up is J, the guy you need to know, the grace you need to accept, the God you need to put first. Next is O, the people you need to love, the friends you need to serve. And finally comes U, the you that trusts, the you that prays, the you that finally realizes I'm not the center of, the head of, or the butt of the universe. The you that likes cars, jobs, houses, nature, money, and every other good thing, but doesn't need them because you've already found the thing that can't be bought. You already share the thing that can't be kept. And you know the God who wrote the formula for happiness. So what is our formula? Are we the young teenager or a naturist? Are we a millionaire in our lives? Material possessions, they can contribute to a, f- do material possessions contribute to a full life? Bob Marley's last words to his son Ziggy was, money can't buy life. See what Jesus says in Luke 12 verse 15. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist of abundance of possessions. Clearly, there is a place for possessions, but an abundant life doesn't consist of abundant possessions. We would be naive to romanticise poverty, but it doesn't measure up with happiness. Jesus had a lot to do to say about money and possessions, maybe because it was a good barometer for our hearts, our attitudes, our values, and our priorities. We can learn from this when Jesus responded to two 
um, incidences in the Bible involving money. So first off, we have the rich fool. This guy, he had, he had a pretty good life. He had so many possessions that he didn't have enough storerooms to store his crops and his live feed. So what did he do? He knocked down his old stores, built bigger ones, and then so he could fit all of his possessions and crops and seeds all into his, these big barns. He thought, yeah, I got life sorted. I can sit back. I can eat. I can drink and be merry. But God said, you fool. When your soul is taken, what is going to happen with all of your possessions? Are they just going to be stuff? There's no life in it. Happiness is not always about instant gratification. Happiness is not always about getting more or depending on material security. Happiness is a long-term view. It not only looks at oneself, but it helps you look at God and to the others around you. The story ends sad because the guy passed and his stuff just kind of sat there. But ultimately, there was nothing... He basically just had an empty life and meaningless life. His problem with happiness was not that he was rich, but that that's what all consumed him. In contrast, we have the widow's might, reading here in Luke 21, 1-4. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all, for all these out there put out their abundance, have put in their offerings for God, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had. We have a tendency to compare ourselves with others. In the incident recounted here, Jesus further suggests that comparing people based on our personal wealth and possessions does not reveal everything that counts. Once again, it's not about the bling on the outside, but it's on the bang on the inside. Being rich in God's attitude rather than stingy is ultimately what matters regardless of whether we are rich or if we are poor. So what else does Jesus say about leading our lives to happiness? He wasn't interested in those who were all talk and no action. Jesus' brother captures this attitude nicely in James 1 verse 22 to 27. All right. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Everyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law and gives this freedom and continues in it, not forgetting that they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted from the world. So how do we, how do we keep a happy life? Looking back at the last topic, we had the Pope who had his top 10 tips for happiness. Jesus even has his own top 10 tips, the 10 commandments. First off, we have, I love the Lord your God.